Hi, Rev Wellers. Okay. So a workout for you today. We are set up right now. We're set up in, this is my home, believe it or not. So it's all smoke and mirrors when you see stuff. Um, and we just set up a, a set for our teacher training. We had to make some teacher training videos. So I thought, well, since we're set up, might as well do some workout videos. So I put on Facebook yesterday what you guys wanted to see, what type of workouts. And one of the first ones that was posted was from my friend Lindy, who said, but, 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 but. Um, and it was interesting how some said, well, we're we doing spiritual or physical workouts? Physical workouts, I want to train you physically, but remember, it's always, always, always got to be about something more. Otherwise, what is the point? What's the point? So this is supposed to train your insides as much as your outsides. And funny enough, when Lindy asked for some, some glute work, butt work, it's interesting because our butt, the muscle itself, it is the, next to our chest and back, it's the largest muscle in our body. Lower body for sure, it's the primary mover of our lower body. And generally in life, we do a lot of movement from our hips. And so we hold a lot of power and a lot of strength in our hips. And it really is a place that apart from God and apart from kind of nurturing this inner place of us, of, of our soul and of our thoughts and feelings, it will become um, this I can do it spirit. As Johnny, our Rev Well and uh, Holy Yoga instructor, lead instructor says, it's really our ego. Our butt is our ego. It's the thing that we kind of drive through life with. But interesting enough, it gets super tight and, and, and it causes a lot of pain, but it also can be quite weak when we tend to use our quadriceps more so than our glutes. So I just wanted to teach you a little something, uh, just kind of get you thinking about the, the glute muscle and just aware of it, and then we'll train it. And I'm also gonna do some abs. So this is kind of a throwback to the 1980s for me or the early 90s when we would have in classes on schedules at the gym, it'd be guts and butts. Yes, guts and butts. But those were two um, areas that people like to, to work because it either is a problem area or it's an area of weakness. Now remember, we cannot spot reduce. We cannot spot reduce. Uh, you, you cannot out train a bad diet. So what you're eating is paramount. And, and that, that is everything of your day. If you're eating poorly, you feel poorly. And working out is just gonna kind of be like this temporary high to try and compensate for the other parts of your day. So how you eat, the decisions you make all day long, and some of us stress eat, some of us emotionally eat, some of us eat because we're bored. Those eating, those choices really must be looked at too. So that's why we want you to come through Wayless to feed more. If you like what we're doing here, you need to get deeper and, and get to those rooted issues. But working out is fun, and uh, maybe it's not fun for you, but you know you need to do it. So let's do it well, and let's do it connected to the whole scheme of our day. My glutes, my butt workout, is somehow connected down to even how I feel about my life, how I feel about my uh, job, my marriage, what's going on inside of me, because it's coming out outside of me, right? Okay, so interesting too, the Bible says in Psalm 139.13, uh, the psalmist says, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb, my inmost being. So we're gonna talk a little bit about abs, and, and if we aren't really uh, living from our inmost being, our thoughts, our feelings, our seat, our appetite of seat and emotions, which is really what that word inmost means in the Hebrew, the appetites, the things we desire in our inmost place, we will just move through life with our ego. So our butt and our gut are connected. If we're ignoring what's going on inside of us, if we're not listening to the messages of our life, what am I feeling, what am I thinking, the seat of my appetites, What's going on here? I'm just gonna overcompensate from here. I'm just gonna say, don't forget out of my way, ego, me, 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 and move from my butt. And then I'm really just a big butt. Really, then I'm just, there's a lot of different words you can think of. We just called people these names uh, when we're frustrated. So guts and butts, they're connected. That, that's pretty cool, right? All right, so let me train you a little bit and think about, to rethink about your abs and your glutes. And then later, once you've watched this intro, just fast forward it to the workout, you, but apply these basic thoughts. Okay, so first let's talk about the glutes. The gluteus maximus, there's three parts to your, to your butt muscle, but mostly I'm gonna talk about the maximus today. It's the big muscle, a little bit of the medius as well. This muscle is made to drive your hip back. It's an extension of the hip. It's to push back. It's not here, when I go here, when I hip flex, 
So a lot of sitting all day, a lot of running, whatever I do, we do a lot of forward motion. I'm actually stretching this out and it's weak. When I push through and drive the hip back is when I'm actually beginning to engage my glutes, my maximus, this power driven muscle. So it's in this hip extension that I'm most using my glutes. That's why, yes, in a little bit we're gonna do some old tried and true uh, butt kick kind of things because it's, that, that, it's, a, it's a movement that um, is really from, really kind of from here to here. It's a big one. But what happens is in most exercise classes or in anything we do, the knee flexion and extension starts to come be a part of this primary move of the glute. So we tend to use our quads more than our glute. And these muscles will just drive the thing all day long as well too. So our legs, how we've been designed is so strong that we'll just kind of muscle through and lose sight of what are we trying to really work. So today, because we're working glutes, I want you to be thinking of this action of the hip going back. Notice, I'm not even moving my knee, but in some of the motions that I do, I am gonna be using my knee, and I'm gonna want to start to use this instead of using right here from my hip flexion extension. I'm not even changing the angle of my knee, but this is all in my glutes right here. Okay, so an exercise to think about. My friend Christina, RevWell instructor, showed us this, and it's really cool because squats, we do a lot of squats in RevWell, well, squats in your classes. Um, when we come into a squat, we always want to keep that neutral spine and come down and then come up. So that's a pretty good squat there if you're looking from the side. I'm not losing the, the natural curve of my spine, and I only want to come as low as I can keep a neutral spine line. If I start to crack or bend or overcompensate, I've come too low. I don't want to go that low. So as I come down, I find my bottom, come back up. So here's the thing. My knees are moving, so these want to take over. A really cool test you can do to just re-engage and find your glutes in a squat position. Take a chair, turn it to face you, and then as you come down, so I hope you're doing this with me right now, go ahead, pause, and go get a chair and come back. You want that chair to kind of come right at your knees. And then as you go back, you don't want your knees to move away from the chair. And it feels really weird. It feels like you're going to fall over because you are using the hips are extending back, 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 and then coming back up. That is a squat that's primarily driving mostly from the hips. That's why I'm kind of holding the table or holding the chair and coming back up. So we're going to do these somewhat in our workout today. I'm going to take the the knees from having to be next to the chair away. But you should do these just right now just to kind of find, oh, there's my, there's my glute when I do a multi-joint exercise like a squat or a lunge or a plie squat. So, oh my gosh, my glutes are already firing up. So slow, thoughtful, it's this action, not this action that uses your glutes. Um, now, in most, transverse abdominal, abs, 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 we tend to think more of these, uh, the six pack abs, which is really an eight pack, um, those, you know, ripple washboard or kind of these striations that you see. Those are abs, but they're not the ab that you really, really need. The ab that is the crucial in most place of you is the transverse abdominal, and it's in the deepest place of your abs. There's four parts of your abs. It's the deepest one. You can't see it. You can't see it at all. It's not sexy. It doesn't get any props like the, like the rectus abdominis does, but it is paramount, paramount. So you can be doing crunches all day long and working that flexion right at the, uh, at the spinal flexion and trying to get those six-pack abs. But if you don't work the transverse, you actually are, you can still have a pooch, you can still have dysfunction in your spine, have back pain, um, and then if you start adding load and you haven't worked your transverse, you get more pain and you, you, you're just basically a house of cards. You can only get so high and it will all come crashing down. So your transverse, it is, it goes in this direction. The muscle, it's like a belt, like a band that goes all the way around you. That's all it does. The only action to the transverse is to draw in. And when you exhale, 
is when the transverse draws most in. It will work into that contraction inward when you exhale. So that's why we always say in weightlifting, whenever you have load, you want to exhale on the exertion because that's when everything's going to come in and support the spine and support all the, the um, surrounding joints so that you're most strong. If you are inhaling, when you are trying, when you have the most weight, you're actually expanding and you're not going to be able to engage that transverse so deeply. So what I want you to do right now for your transverse is you're going to turn to what I call a pitch stop, uh, a short stop position. And you're just going to come onto your knees and you can turn your elbows out if you want. And um, some of you may have done like cat cows where you're, this is spinal movement. This is spinal flexion and extension. Oh, feels good. And then I want you to find neutral spine. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift my shirt just so you can see what's going on here. As you inhale, deep breath in and notice I'm not going to change the curve of my spine. As I exhale, I draw my tummy up. So it almost becomes concave, but I don't change the um, curve of my back. And then release, inhale, exhale. That, honestly, we could end the workout right here. If you were just to work transverse for a few uh, minutes a day, so inhaling, exhaling, and the goal really is I'm talking and holding my transverse up towards the ceiling. I'm going to change it, come up, my transverse is still in, in, and I'm I'm using it, I'm talking, I'm going about daily living, and I have that transverse constantly giving me support. Friends, back pain, knee pain, hip pain, um, this is it. Let's get really wise about how we use our abs in conjunction with our glutes, and we might be able to work out some of this dysfunction we have in our spine. I have it. I have dysfunction and I have to be thoughtful. Transverse for me is definitely big because I generally just, out of my dysfunction, my hip flexors get tight and I pelvic tilt a little bit forward so I get low back pain just a bit. I can see in some of my videos where I'm just tired, this starts to happen more. So I have to transverse, draw in, soften my tail a little bit more, oh, and already I can feel space happen in my low back. Okay, would you like to work out? What do you say we do some working out? All right, now next time you can fast forward or watch that again, man, do we forget this stuff. All right, so let's do some glute. We're going to do five exercises for glute, five exercises for transverse, but still abdominal working. But remember that drawing in. It's going to take some practice. You're going to want to hold your breath. You want to work through it. You can work transverse when you're driving in your car. When you're sitting at a stoplight, you can use the stoplight as a training time. As long as I'm in the red, I'm going to hold, I'm going to breathe, I'm going to sing. Try that. Try putting on worship music or whatever and singing while you hold your transverse. Then we're getting really strong. All right, so let's start. First thing we're going to do is the chair squat. So uh, you, this, my chair is like Stonehenge, seriously. It weighs about 1,000 pounds. Uh, so if you have a good heavy chair, great, because it'll help you support your weight. You're going to come with the high back, and if you need to put weight onto the chair, um, have your kids stand there, whatever you need to do to help you, because we are going to work that extension back with the hip with the squat. So let's go ahead and do that. So shoulders back, neutral spine, transverse in. I'm already working my abs. And then I'm going to go ahead and let my hips come back, 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 back. So I need the chair just to keep me balanced. Toes are off the floor and come back up. One, two, drive it with the hips. Three, remember these things are going to want to take over. Four, five, this, the action open. Close six, seven, eight, nine, head up, 10, use it, think about it, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, drive it with the hips, 16, good job. Two more. Uh, 20. Good. Excellent. Now all you're going to do is step off to the side. Hold on to the chair again. This is called a little pistol squat. You are not going to get as, as far down as you once did, but same thing. Shoot the hip back one foot off the ground and just use that one leg 
One glute. Four. Five. Woo. Hip. If that's too much, you can put that foot behind you. 10, other side. Drive the hip back. One, two, three. If once you watch this again, four. If you want to put some weight on, five. You can. Six, seven, tummy tight. Eight, nine, uh, ten. Ha! Huh. Let's do it again. Heart rate's up because this is your big muscle working. This is what happens. One, open these up and drive up from them. Two, try and press more through your heels. Yep, four. Try to think as if you have no knees. You almost just have to take the knees out of the equation. Make the hip, drive it. Use the chair as so your weight can go back a little bit more than normal. Exhale. Tummy tight. Three more. Two more. Last one. Whew. Back to the side. Right leg down. And again, if you want to just bring it back behind you and do the one leg. But the hip goes back. That's why I think if you bring your leg forward some, you can compensate for the weight going back. Versus if I bring it behind me, I tend to put my weight forward into the quad. Two more. One more. Other side. Tummy, head up, spine tall. Shoot the hip back. Into the heel. It's your worship. What's going on inside of you? Listen to your life. What's going on? Ten. Woo. Good. Move this away. Come on down. <clears throat> You're gonna lower down onto your, your left elbow, my right. Or you can come down onto your arm. Just go on the arm. It's a little bit more level spine. Flex the foot. Turn the heel down and lift up. Now this is the medius. It's a helper of a mover at the hip. Tummy, again, transverse, draw in, hold it back. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, switch, other side. Yeah, you're gonna get my sound effect. You can open the heart, turn the toe down, move right from the hip. My knee isn't even getting a chance to do anything. Five more. Five, four, three, two, and one. Ha! Switch. Doing two sets. If you want to do three sets, go on with your bad self and do three sets. Ah. Ten. Woo! Fire. Fire, 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 fire. Other side. Toe turns down, so I lead with the heel. You get in that kind of, there's a rhythm to fusing your glutes. And that's leading with your heel. Three, two, and one. Oh, hey, you can do a child's pose for a minute. <laughs> oh my goodness, Lindy. Quite the idea, okay. Grab a hand weight. Now, I have a little hand weight. This is my daughter's little hand weight. So small is better because the weight is kind of inconsequential to the what we're trying to do here. If I put it behind my knee, now I'm taking my knee out of it. Because remember, 
My knee always wants to just be a part of this action that's going on my hip. So let's shut the knee down. So I'm squeezing that weight. So you can squeeze anything, tennis ball, um, toilet paper, whatever. Just put it behind you. And now you can go up this, friends, nice and slow, is your glute max, your extensors of your hips. And believe it or not, they really do, as strong as they are, they don't get a lot of isolation time because they generally help out with something going on at the knee. Two more. One more. Good. Switch other side. So open that knee, close it down, really squeeze, flex the foot. My uh, body in all fours. I am using my transverse right now to hold my tummy up to the ceiling. Good. Two more. I'm doing 10 on each side. You can go ahead and do 15 on each side once you know this workout. You can add some weight to it. That, friends, is your glute. Uh, let's go five more. Yeah, kind of feeling spicy. Four more. <laughs> Three more. Two. And one. Good. Other side. Four. Exhale. So you can see the glutes opening, closing, opening, closing. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. Flip it over. Oh. I don't know if the mic pack might fall off. We'll see what happens here. Lay on the ground. You can take more weight here if you wanted to. Uh, if I could grab my eight, I would. But you also need no weight, so put your feet right underneath your, bend your knees and then put your feet underneath your knees. You can hold the weight, pressing the heels into the ground, <sighs> lifting up, transverse draws in. So this is awesome. This exercise, the glute is fully extended and then the abs are fully, the transverse is fully in. So it's a nice kind of cinching of everything that's um, strong. So inhale, exhale. <sighs> Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. <sighs> Ten, five more. This is so good. You're kind of rewiring the mapping in your brain to say, I need my glutes. Especially when I'm going to do some lower body exercises, whether it's the primary mover or stabilizer. Two more. One more. Good. Take a moment, take a break. Bring your knees in, stretch your low back, right? Because that's some low back Woo, extension. They work together. Ah, good. One more time. Go. One. Two, and again, you could load this with some weight. Three, exhale, everything. Four, glute is up, transverse in. My husband is in the voluntary, uh, voluntary police force. And this action, he actually has me, uh, he's learning how to MMA fight. You know, if he gets in a fight, it's the worst thing is to get pinned on the ground and his instructor's teaching him to, I kind of hit me and the kids will sit on his stomach and he's in this position and he'll have to thrust up to get out of being on the floor and it's his primary glute mover that has the power to get him out of it. Two more and one more. We might have done a few extra there. One, ha! Oh my gosh, I'm contemplating whether we need to just end this and start a new video. So, I might do that right now. 
and then we can move into abs because we still haven't even gotten to abs yet. So if you want to end it here, end it, and then come back for abs if you want to continue on. You've been working your transverse the whole time. All right. So transverse, from where we were, come back onto all fours here. Now remember, kind of had you in that short stop position where you had a neutral spine, you weren't in a cat, in a cat you weren't in a cow, you're just kind of neutral, and then drawing up on the exhale, still breathing, still holding, and then inhaling. As you inhale and hold transverse, your, um, your lungs have to expand on the side, to the side wall, because you're not expanding forward like you would be if you were naturally uh, relaxed breathing. All right, so find your neutral spine. So that's not, and that's not. So what is neutral? Yeah, right at neutral, you begin to feel your transverse help out. And now exhale, draw the tummy up. There's your transverse, you should be able to breathe. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Keep breathing. Friends, I'm telling you, it just seems too simple to be true, but this is powerful. If you just tr trained your transverse, I promise you, that is where you could lose some, um, uh, some uh, circumference off of your waist. Because this muscle, without being trained, you can have all those pretty muscles on top, but never really engage and cinch your waist and get stronger where you are meant to get stronger, where you've been designed to be stronger. I love it. The inmost place is not a place that anyone can see. Only you can see it. You and God are there, right? So from there, continue to train the transverse in your abs. Tuck your toes under. I, I still have my transverse. P.S. I didn't let, tell you to let go of it yet. You're just breathing and training it. Root the hands and now lift the knees off the ground. Still training your transverse. <laughs> A lot of breath. P.S. In this ab workout, we will not do one crunch. Not a one. Not a one. Go ahead and put the knees down. Take a moment. Continue to train your transverse. Good. Especially, you can feel it's most powerful on the exhale. You should all be breathing at home. Your husband, kids, your wife should be wondering, what are you doing? I'm training, I'm training. <laughs> this is intense training. This is longevity training. If I train this muscle, I'm less likely to get injured. I'm more likely, do you know if I have a transverse engaged when I'm running or when I'm lifting weight, 40% of the weight and impact will come off of your joints. 40% friends, that's a lot. Good, three more, two more, and one. Take a moment, take a rest, stretch back. Ooh, we're not done. Now turn and face me. Gate, this posture is called gate. Blade that foot, come on up. Reach up, transverse in. Even though I'm reaching up, my belly wants to do this. So soften the tailbone, lift up, inhale, exhale. And then just do a side crunch. Back up, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, up. So I'm working my obliques at this point, but still the transverse draws in as you exhale. Good, four more. Four, I love this one because it kind of feels like a bow. Pull, like a bow and arrow up to the heavens. Two more, two. One more, one, nice switch, other side. Here's the truth about abs. Those kind of crunches, they still have their place, but I use my abs while I'm on my feet all day. So upright, I don't, being on the floor has its, has its benefits, but if all you do is train your core on the floor, you don't live life on the floor unless you want to live life on the floor, which I don't think that's your call. You kind of meant to be upright and powerful and using your abs, your inmost being, your seat of your appetites and your emotions, you're connected to it all day long. As my friend Renee says, listen to your life because it's telling you what you need, it's telling you 
where you are, because we can't know where we're going unless we know where we are, right? Three more. Up, two more, do you feel that? In your left um, oblique side body, two. One more, one. Good, and come back up. Nice. Now, same thing, just come down onto your side. Modified plank right here, okay? So if we're gonna go from here, all I want you to do is to dip your hip and lift. Dip your hip and lift. Think about this hip bone coming up and down. So you're going to bend a little bit at that bottom knee to come up. Next level up, bring it up, dip the hip. Let's go. Transverse. Draw it back towards the spine, belly button towards the spine. Good. Four, three, two, and one. Switch, other side. Ah, ah, ah. Woo. Down, up. When you're strength training, momentum is not your friend. You come down because you tell the body to come down. One more. Up. Ha. Ha. Come on up. Stand up with me. And finally, standing abs. I know. See? Not one crunch. You're going to put your hands out in front of you. But notice, draw your shoulders back. So not here, because that's going to set up something wrong in the thoracic spine. I want to draw back. Get my shoulders upright. There we are. Good. From there, you're just going to take your right leg, lift it up as high as you can in a straight shot. I'm going to turn to the side. Keep going. I'm not changing my spine at all. I can only go as high as I can get the leg without changing my spine. Let me show you what not good would be is here. So figure that out. Maybe you're only coming up three feet, but strong in the belly. Good. Now from here, start to pull an arrow and add a rotation. Good. Three more. Two more. And one more. Other side. You can feel your legs are probably tired, but guess what, friends? That's how your abs work. They work with your lower body. If I'm sitting down, I'm pretty much generally shutting off my abs, which is why it'd be really wise for you when you're at work, sitting in your car, that you draw the abs in and work your abs. Train your truth is what we call it, right? Your inmost being, where you've been designed by God in your mother's womb. Train that place. What's going on in there? Good, three more. Two more. And one more. Nice. I'm tired. Oh, Lindy. <laughs> Good job. Big hand. That was conditioning and some teaching. So we didn't just go, we gave it some thought. Now, you start applying those things. Those go with you in everything we do. If you go back to video one of Rev Well, uh, of a Rev Fit class, use these muscles. Start driving more from your glutes, requiring less of your quads. Transverse all the time. Practice that transverse, friends. I want to hear from you. If you end up using this transverse and find out your low back pain is subsiding, I want to hear. Let us know. Um, we also can do a thing in the next video or so where we talk, check for uh, diastasis recti, which is a splitting of the abdominal wall, which happens for those who maybe had babies, uh, just an injury. A lot more people have it than we, than, we, than we know. And so that's another thing where good old crunches, not to say they're wrong, I still love to do them from now and then, but how can I think about how I live my life that I can use abs, use my glutes, that's forward moving for me for all of my activity of daily living. That's what we do at RevWell. All right, so if you're interested in becoming an instructor, you wanna learn like that kind of stuff fascinates you and how we're created in God's image and how he's designed the body and how we can use it as ministry because friends, it's ministry and it's powerful. Um, we need to hear from you, so go to the website and click on become an instructor. Our next class starts in August, okay?
That was fun. I had a fun time with you today. Come back. We'll do another one. Peace.